It's, it's a lot. Meek Mill and P. Diddy matching outfits picture goes viral after Meek Mill comes up in this lawsuit, right? You got this lawsuit where this dude is suing P. Diddy and people been going through it. He brought, uh, uh, I believe, a young Miami name came up in it, like about her cousin, you know, doing some things. Get ready, because what you thought was predictable is about to take a wild turn. The plot thickens, the suspense rises, and nothing is as it seems anymore. Just when you think you figured it out, bam, everything changes. This isn't your usual story. It's about to get a whole lot more intense. So stay with me, because the next move is going to flip the script completely. Expect the unexpected, because what's coming is going to blow your mind. Hold on, because the real action is just getting started. This Meek Mills. Well, he said a Philly rapper. You understand? And it was retracted, redacted in the paperwork to that. Because first of all, it had Meek Mills, it had Stevie J. They had redacted their names and they had Usher and they redacted their names and just said a uh, performer of the Super Bowl and a Philly rapper. Everybody kind of knew back in the day that Meek Mills and Puff was a little too friendly. Anytime two rappers or two people in the industry come dressed up alike on more than one occasion, they, my man, listen here, man, my dudes in Philly, I got some real strong dudes in Philly. They don't play that shit. And they probably embarrassed for the fact to see that Meek Mills one of the street guys that came out of there got caught up in this holly weird sh this holly weird sh whereas that he's dressing like he dressing the same sh he dressing like diddy hugged up with diddy i think that lil rod know a lot of sh but I know this, two men dress alike, it's just like two men laying down. When they both get up, <laughs> they both homos. <laughs> and that's real talk, bro. My man, you come to, a, you go to a party, dog, and the nigga got the same shirt you got on, I'm taking my shirt off. I'm walking around in a t-shirt. And then, not to blow Meek Mills up out the water or anything like that, it was said that they checked his Google search and all the other shit, and he was searching for some online gay porn and all the other shit like that. Oh, wow. That shit is crazy, bro. But listen, those are those are what, you know, it's crazy that money, that lifestyle, and you trying to fit into something gets you. These guys never set out to do all this shit. Meek Mills, when he got into the game, he didn't set out to be uh, uh, question about his manhood with Diddy, but he put that self himself in that position. You've been waiting for this, and trust me, it's bigger than anything you could have imagined. The truth is about to come out, and it's going to change everything you thought you knew. This isn't just any reveal; it's a game changer, the kind that will have you questioning everything. So get ready, because this is the moment where everything shifts. The secrets are out, and the reality, it's going to be shocking. Jada Pinkett and Will Smith, you told me before that she was at a party before that they attended, and you said the party was weird. Tell me about that. Okay, uh, this is Boxer. His name's Twine, he's from our neighborhood. He, he was married to uh, Tanisha Arnold. 
the brawl play Pam on uh, Martin Lawrence. We went to the party with her. I mean, it was a matter of fact, it was a set it off party. Jada Pickett, Vivica Frost, all of them was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just, uh, seemed like Puff and Tupac it was like a couple, seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? The vibes ain't there. I guess that, that's what Tupac was talking about, the Illuminati and shit. It's like Vivica Fox was with this big gay man. He was 6'9". They called him, his name 6'9". He had the red hair with a big old booty and shit. Nobody was gay in over. What the fuck is going on here? It's just a lot of, a lot of weird shit, dude. You know what I'm saying? That shit, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? I guess that's what Tupac, I guess he wanted to get up out of the Illuminati or something. But I, I seen her yeah, matter of fact, MC Light pulled off with Tanisha Arnold, you know what I'm saying, in her brand new 560, black one. Yeah, yeah, yeah that shit weird, dude. Yeah, that's some weird ass shit going on, you know? Yeah. And what was Tupac doing at the party, yo? Him and Puff was there together. They was there, you know what I'm saying? That's why I don't know how they fucking fell out or nothing like that. They was road dogs, you know what I'm saying? They ain't even got pictures of him. He got on that uh, uh, that blue sweater with the turtleneck. Him and him hugged up like this with the black hat. Have you ever seen that picture? Nah, I don't recall, but I'm pretty sure I came across it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That picture there, that, they was at that party that day. Yeah, it's just like a bunch of weird shit, that whole fucking... Yeah, that shit weird, dude. Yeah, a bunch of... Uh, it ain't right. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm not no gay bash or nothing. I mean, none of that shit, but that shit ain't right. You know what I'm saying? That shit, that whole party was weird old out. Yeah, and it was Jada Pickett, but. You saying that, you saying the whole party was weird. What did you see at the party that made it weird? I mean, I'm confused. I guess it was the Illuminati. It's just weird. I know I wouldn't want to be part of no shit like that. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm from the old school, dude, and uh, that shit wasn't really tolerated with my generation, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, hate crime, yes, but it's more tolerated these days and nothing like that. It's more, you know what I'm saying, more open now, you know what I'm saying? But back then it was kind of fishy, you know what I'm saying? Still kind of fishy, you know? But it's more, you know, out there now. The incident y'all had with Warren G and Kid Frost, tell me about that, my man. Okay, Kid Frost had gave a, a party at the House of Blues. One of our big homeboys wanted to go with us. You know what I'm saying? So he went with us and we, he said, Ooh, you young niggas have fun. So one of uh, Kid Frost homies still on my big homie. But he didn't know that he was around, uh, it was maybe about 20 of us. So, we, the dude that uh, socked my big homie, we beat the dog shit out of him. So my big homie, he came to, he uh, he like, that's the motherfucker? We like, yeah, and it was two security guards had him. Had uh, had the dude that we beat up from Kid Frost entourage. So uh, my big homie knocked that motherfucker out while the yellow jacket, you know, the yellow jackets with the event security, they had the dude, so my homie still knocking him out. Boom! So the, the dude with the uh, yellow jacket was talking shit. Man, what the fuck is wrong with him? My homeboy knock out him too. Bam! Like, ooh! So the other one like, man, he got back. Little Jamaican dude come up talking shit. Man, are you going crazy? My homeboy sock him too. So we went down to get our car for valet. And it was the dude, it's LBC. And he like, what the fuck is that? And he's like, it's Long Beach City Crib. So my homeboy knew this dude was an imposter. He, if you're from Long Beach, you're gonna say roll the 20s or insane. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You're a real uh, block boy. You know what I'm saying? 19th Street. You're gonna say something. A real crib. So this nigga say he's from Long Beach City Crip. My homeboy like, wait a minute. And knocked him out too. So uh, Warren G and them was down there. Him and Cedric Ballas waiting on their cars. And they, I get, they seen my homeboy get busy like that. So they... So uh, they had left before us, went up to Fat Burgers. So we came, 
Got in our shit. They finally brought our cars to ballet. We went up to Fat Burgers. And one to the and so Cedric Zabalas was up there already. You know, eating their shit and shit. So we came in there. The big homie like, uh, hey, motherfucker. He pointed at Cedric Zabalas. Like, man, you've been dumping us for years. Mother. I'm losing all my motherfucking money betting on your motherfucking ass. So uh, Warren G was right there. He like, my homie like, man, that's a nice ass watch. So uh, he like, uh, man, let me try that on. You know what I'm saying? So uh, by then, uh, my homeboy, somebody got my homeboy attention, and he turned his head. Shit, Cedric Zabalas and what's his name was in a, uh, he was in a rag top 500 pins. This motherfucker like jumped off. I mean, he he drove up off the motherfucker. He didn't even pay attention to the curve. He jumped off of the curve instead of using the, uh, you know, the driveway. That shit was funny. But my homeboy like, damn, he almost bust his whole fucking engine block. Yeah, that's, that, that shit was funny as a motherfucker. Like, damn. Yeah. So if you thought the best days were behind us, get ready to be proven wrong. The comeback is real, and it's going to blow everyone away. Stay tuned. This is just the beginning. That 50 came over my house. He met me at the apartment uh, because... I overheard the conversation about these guys wanted them dead. So he asked me, did I have a vest? I said, yeah, I got I got a bulletproof vest. So I had some extra vests because I used to buy them from officers and stuff like that. And um, he came over, he tried the vest. It was too big for him. You understand what I'm saying? The vest was too big for him. Uh, so I gave him a smaller cover for the vest pass that he had. And I had told him that those guys were going to come out and try to get him. And we had the conversation. I'm not going to mention that because I talked about it in my book. Uh, 50 then told me he was going to handle his business. But he had to go out to Cancun first because he was going to do the how to rob the industry song out there. They had gave him five thousand dollars. I think he's probably get ten or five, but they had gave him some upfront money. So then I told him we good out at Cancun because I had met some guys who worked with the syndicate, and I used to go out there every uh, year because I used to do the security at the door at Daddy's old Daddy old. So I knew this guy, he was Puerto Rican, but he was working out there with the syndicate. So if I needed something, whatever I needed, he would make sure I have it in Cancun. So now, long story short, I told 50 he was going to be good when he come out there because I was going to bodyguard him. So then he said, all right, cool. So I'm calling 50. He never, because he, he didn't show up. So then... I'm walking through the hotel and his manager got his manager name say yo big gene what's up he said i need to speak to chad i said what well, was what's up he said uh 50 shot he's in icu they don't know if he's gonna make it i want to know if i'm all right i'm gonna be all right i said so what the fuck you need to speak to chad for and what the fuck is you doing in the pool? If he shot. I went and got a phone card. I paid $100 for a phone card. You only get like 10 minutes on them. <laughs> and I start calling 50. I start calling 50 phone. And this girl eventually picked up. And I said, yo, tell 50 this gene. And he said, uh, she said, okay, Gene. I said, is he all right? She said she was going to make it. He's going to be all right. I'll tell him you call. So the next time I saw 50 after that, he was, it's your birthday song. And we were in Puerto Rico at Jack the Rapper. And I was with the Black Hand clip, right? 
50 wasn't speaking to none of them at the time. I was sitting over by the side. He came directly over to me. He said, yo, Big Gene. I said, what up, 50? He said, they can't stop what God got planned. And gave me dap and walked off. That's one. And trust me, you won't believe what happens next. There was the 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 fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay Z. And then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game. And then it's all Jay Z. It's all Jay Z. It's all Jay Z. And he was working with R. Kelly, and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both fucked Aaliyah. Jay Z unplugged. Yeah. Jaguar Riders there, yeah. heart of the city. Yeah, it's the, it's the 21 year anniversary. It's the 21 year anniversary, month. and I don't think we've seen nothing like that since. And I know you posted it. We're going to talk about the network, but I know you posted it and put it out mm -hmm. there. Uh, I want you to touch on the either the genius or the insanity of Jay Z. Um, this man, as far as what he's done since then, mm. is you know either preordained, destined, or he had a plan. Mm. But it seemed like he geared himself towards it. But mm. you were there to witness it firsthand from what he was back then. Mm. I just want you to like, cause you know, not many people have a firsthand account of what this man is doing and what he's about to do. In 21 years, I have never had anything to say about Mr. Sean Carter, other than the fact that we had a pleasant working relationship and he was an excellent businessman. 21 years. In 21 years. <sighs> and after 21 years, What I will say to you is, is, is this. The first time I ever saw Jay-Z or even heard him spit a rhyme was at an MC battle, street battle in New York. But he didn't show up as Jay-Z. He didn't show up as the hottest rapper on the street. He showed up as the nigga that was with Big L. Rest For in those peace. of you. Rest in peace, Big L. Rest in peace, Big L. That dopest. was the one of the dopest. Yes. Big L was who put Jay Z on. Without question. And then Big L died, and then the next thing you know, Jay Z. And then, you know, he starts clientele with Tupac and clientele with Biggie and doing songs with Biggie and building a working, you know, camaraderie with Honeycombs. And um, AKA Diddler, I mean Diddy. And um, why do you give him the honeycombs? Why, why do you give him honeycombs? Because he smacks so sweet. <laughs> that fucking side of my. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, then, you know, and then Reasonable Doubt was happening, and then Dame's in the picture, and Dame's building Rockefeller, and everybody's talking about Jay Z, Jay Z, and. Don't get me wrong, there is nobody who loves reasonable doubt more than me. Mm. At the time nobody. of. Nobody. No, still. Yes, to this day. Still. Listen to me, I don't give a fuck how I feel about you. For me to have bad feelings about someone and not acknowledge art and its greatness or at its finest is hating. Maybe I don't fuck with you, but them shoes is hot, yo. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you gotta be real. Mm. So I will never, shit, I was just listening to Watch the Throne earlier this week and, I'm, and that shit was enraging me. Cause I'm like, y'all motherfuckers was living for this fucking album and was Kanye, 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 Kanye. And then all of y'all made all of this money on this motherfucking dude. And now all of a sudden, Who, him? <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like he was good enough when you let him slump just Blaze's fucking whole career. Mm. He was the shit. That's the whole issue in the it, it, it was worth putting just Blaze on the line for because just Blaze was Rockefeller production until Kanye. Yeah. Who's just Blaze? producing for now that i don't know who is he? yeah about to say that i don't know 
And he was there. He was, he was the movement. Where is Just Blaze? Yeah. I mean, he was making hoes beats. You got title. You're a billionaire. Mm. Where the fuck is Just Blaze? That's the question. Is he, why is he, he's not at least an executive at Rock Nation? He's not at least an executive at Title. At least. Like I said, Biggie, Biggie died, Tupac died. And then there was the, the, the fight between who was the top rapper now, Nas and, and Jay-Z. And then the next thing you know, Nas has a nervous breakdown and he's taken out of the game and it's all Jay-Z. It's all Jay-Z. It's all Jay-Z. And he was working with R. Kelly and they were making so many records together. You know, they made all of those records together. They both fucked Aaliyah. They shared so much in common. You know? And then, there was a falling out. And that's like it never happened. Whoever talks about best of the both worlds, best of both worlds. Nobody talks about that. Nobody project. talks about this shit. Nobody they, they, talks I about that project. Swept, that nigga swept that smooth under the rug. Why? <laughs> yeah, we know why. You know what? I got a better question. <laughs> yeah. How valuable is a Biggie Smalls verse? Mm. Yeah. Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting he hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Fucking Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all of that boy. His catalog. Clearly, a Biggie Smalls verse is very valuable. Am I wrong? Does anybody disagree with me? No, that's facts. So then what the fuck happened to the commission? What happened to that album? Right. It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have came out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then the commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy. And then starting his own company. <clears throat> so tell me something. And this ain't me being an asshole. I think everybody that knows Sean Carter knows that he will slump anyone in any relationship for a dollar. Look at how he did Dane. Like, I don't give a fuck if you wanted to get away from your homie, if you wanted to get away from your partner, but to do it the way he did it, it's malicious. But maybe that was because he was fucking the girl that didn't want you. Oh. Let the church say amen? I don't know. Maybe that's why. Maybe that's why you moved his ass around and out of Rockefeller so tough and then just moved right over to Def Jam. By the way, wasn't this all around the time when Aaliyah died? Yeah. And Beyonce's solo career was struggling? Damn on your horn now, that fucking bullshit ass record. Mm. From the Austin Powers shit was some of the worst shit ever. They were having a hard time taking her solo. And then Aaliyah died. And then they brought Rich Harrison in. And you know, kind of think it's crazy right now. She liked posing with him in pictures for, for page six. Aaliyah didn't. She fell in love with Dane. And Aaliyah's gone and, you know. You have to start asking yourself questions after being in this business for this long. If you're a halfway intelligent person, when do you start questioning how lucky some motherfuckers keep getting? Right. Is it really a conspiracy if the same person keeps benefiting off the same kind of tragedy over and over 
and over again. So to answer your question, um, I'm sure he's always gonna be a billionaire and I'm sure he's got great things to happen. I mean, look, he's got the job with the NFL. He's hooking all his friends up with the halftime shows. I mean, think about it. Think about the halftime shows. Jennifer Lopez, Shakira, All Rock Nation. Now uh, Rihanna and then um